So if you're the kind of person who makes a YouTube video, uploads it to YouTube, and then you're kind of done with it, you just want people to watch it and you don't really care about anything else, any other side of it, uh, then this video probably isn't for you. However, if you make your videos with a passion and you want people to enjoy them and you want the videos and your channel to succeed, to get more views and get more subscribers, this is exactly the video for you. Now in the last episode, I didn't go through the steps of uploading to YouTube because I wanted to cover it in this episode. Um, and that's because some software wants to make a movie file, uh, that's pretty much what I do, that you keep and you can watch independently of YouTube at a later stage. And if you want to upload it to YouTube, you upload it as a file. And other software allows you to actually just export straight from your editing suite into YouTube. So you don't make a video as such, you're just exporting it straight away to YouTube. And that's entirely up to you. There's no right or wrong way about that. Um, either way, that video is going to get onto YouTube. So I need to make sure as I upload to YouTube that my render file was created 1080 HD 25 frames a second, or that if I'm uploading directly from a piece of software to YouTube, um, that that setting is set there. It's going to be 1080p HD and 25 frames a second or whatever it is that you work to. Um, but I would have thought you really want to look at 1080 as a minimum anyway. So like I say, I prefer to have a file that's rendered via my editing suite and I watch that before I upload it. Uh, that's my way of a final check at my end to make sure everything's all right. And it has happened to me where I've checked and everything's all right to me, but when I've uploaded it, somehow YouTube's corrupted it. In fact, it only happened just a couple of weeks ago on my last editing the video that was preceding this video about this subject, um, I had to re-upload it. Um, so this procedure I'm gonna go through now is gonna help you get around those problems because most of you won't know that that happened. And it's because of these procedures I have that kind of keeps that from messing up my channel. So I've got my file, I've watched the movie, it's all ready to be uploaded. Now my web browser of choice, and I do this from a desktop, I don't do it from a mobile or a smartphone or a tablet or anything like that, I do it from, uh, well I do it from my laptop. Um, so on my laptop, I basically go to Chrome web browser, and that's my preferred browser of choice because of all the extensions I can um, basically add in there that certainly help me with my management of YouTube and the way that I do all this stuff. So um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel and then I'm gonna click at the top corner there, um, the little um, icon that looks like a camera um, and it says upload video. And then what I get from that is a screen that allows me to drop that file in. It says select files to upload. You can simply drag and drop to there or you can click on select files and then go away and actually select the file. So once we're at that screen now, obviously you can select the file to upload, drag and drop or whatever. The important thing at this stage is not to actually put any file in there, but it's to that box that says public unlisted private schedule and make sure that it says unlisted. And then you can go in there, then you can find your little video clip, um, and then you can say, yep, I want to open that and upload it, and then off it's gonna go, and it's going to upload it to YouTube. Now your screen might look very different than my screen. Essentially what I'm doing at this moment in time is just kind of like going through the options with you, what you're going to see. So obviously this is a video that um, has now uploaded. So it's everything is there ready to go. What we need to do now is enter the description. Uh, we're going to enter the title and we're going to enter, uh, enter the tags. And they're all related, and I'm gonna go through each individually. So we're gonna start off with your title, and that should be roughly eight words, no more than 12. And then that correlates exactly, almost, to your description. Now your description, it doesn't necessarily always have to be about your video. So you can have that pre-populated in there, and I will show you how to do that in a few minutes um, in another part of this video. Um, but essentially, like I say, you wanna work out your title. So for example, in this one, it's a camping trip, um, and it's celebrations in Dorset. So what you need to do then is work out that 
your title and description are linked, like I said. So it's a camper van trip, weekend in Dorset, celebrations. So, so you can start off your actual description with this video. Um, we went to Dorset in the camper van for a nice trip to the south coast and um, to celebrate our wedding anniversary and Joe's birthday. So I've used all those words in there, but I've made a better sentence out of it. But it's linked crucially it's linked and you can carry that on you know we had a great three days we did this we did that went to Durdle Door, we went to um, blah 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 Bay and all that kind of stuff and, and fill that information with a good couple of sentences and then we're moving on to the um, tags underneath that and the tags are just as important because the tags are related to the words that you've used in the title and in your description and what you need to do at this stage is um, understand that you've kind of got to use a bit like hashtags and Instagram and that kind of stuff and Twitter. You've got to use popular um, tags that are going to get people to view your video or indeed what's more important at this stage, get YouTube to understand what the content of your video is about for the purpose of their algorithms to find the right people to watch your video, to find the right places to link to your video. And if you've got uh, monetization, to find adverts that are right for your video as well. This is the crucial bit where I said, which is why I use the Chrome browser, because I've got two plugins that you can see on my screen right now. Uh, one, this one, which is TubeBuddy, um, and this one over here, uh, VidIQ. They're both free to sign up for the uh, basic accounts. And once you've signed up, um, essentially you log into your YouTube account on both of them and uh, you'll get the plugin in your Chrome browser and then when you go back into your YouTube account you'll see all these separate little things that pop up on your screen and these are all ways to actually just remind you what you need to do or to guide you to say listen you've done that and you've done this but if you only did that that'll be a bit better or hey if you're looking for some um, really good um, tags then why not use this and that's what they do that's what they're for um, and they do it really well you don't have to use them all if you don't want to um, but I think that they're pretty good with the way that they go through everything and the way it's all explained so we've now done pretty much everything we're almost ready to uh, choose our thumbnail what you need to do is still make sure that it's set to unlisted um, just to make sure that you're happy with that if you've got a playlist that this goes into um, again choose a playlist that's relevant to this video um, and then once the video's kind of finished and it's processed you should see the thumbnails and YouTube's going to pick you three thumbnails randomly from when it processed your video use them or if you look TubeBuddy's got a little create thumbnail thing now if you use the TubeBuddy thing where well, that'll go in and actually allow you to pick a still frame from your video put some text and effects and everything on there and have that or if you're like me, I actually use Photoshop and I've got a little template that I use with my logo and the wording and things like that. But ultimately what you want is a catchy thumbnail, something as in it's going to catch visually people's attention. Um, maybe it has some words on there just to give them a brief idea of what it's about. Um, but ultimately it's not deceiving. You're not trying to kind of entice people into watch something wrong or anything like that. You're just trying to catch their attention and it's making a relative um, kind of comparison to what they're about to watch in a video. So once you're done with that bit, then um, you can click on done at the top. Then you want to go into your create a studio. So go there, create a studio. Um, and then you want to come down to videos on this section here, video manager. Um, and from your video manager, um, you're obviously looking at the video you've just uploaded. So find the video you just uploaded and then click edit next to it. That's just going to take you back pretty much to where you were, but it's a different kind of back end um, that I can talk you to all the different tabs. So the next thing we're going to do is set up the end screens. Now, if you remember from the last video about editing, I said that the way I personally do it is I leave 20 seconds of kind of B-roll, something nice but not very important, certainly not me talking or anything like that, 20 seconds of that space at the end of my video. Um, and that's to put these elements on now that we're going through. So there is a subscribe, um, I've got a channel because somebody featured in my video so I'm going to feature their channel. Um, and then I've got a, a video that I'm suggesting them to watch. And the way that you add those is click on add element 
and then channel is the other person's channel and you would need to put their name in there the second element I'm going to do is uh, a subscribe button um, and that's basically going to put my logo my channel ID on the end of it um, and then you have to put a video or a playlist so if you want to do you can do video playlist have your most recent upload best of viewer or you can actually choose your own video and playlist now if it's relative to it so say for example it's this video uh, what I would do is I would put the playlist at the end to be how I make my travel videos and people can go watch the playlist um, so it's kind of like a way that you can get people to keep within your channel and keep watching your videos and that boosts your channels rankings and all sorts of things in the background so if you can do that that's really good so that's the end screen when you're done click on save the second one we're going to look at is cards so cards is what we're looking at now and these are prompts to watch other videos go to other channels do a poll anything like that there's quite a few different options of cards you can put in there um, as your videos playing so interactive content if you like and you would place them at points within your video that suit that so if you're talking about a car drop the card in and that's kind of like where it all matches up you go to add card and add the type in there and once you're done um, basically it'll save it itself and you can move them along down the bottom so if you think oh actually it doesn't suit at that timeline it suits at that timeline then you can do that at the bottom uh, and once we've done that one we're going back to info and settings and this is the bit that I spoke about before that you guys didn't know that my last video was corrupt at this stage um, and what I've done is obviously I've, I've unlisted it so you guys don't get to see it but it's still there as a video using the code see this code over here video URL um, that's what it's there for so you can actually watch that independently of it being on YouTube as a live video um, and I'd sent it to Mevi and Dave just to say what do you think about this is everything all right does it make sense uh, about the video editing of course not the trip to Dorset um, and they both came back and said it makes sense but they've got some weird things like your face will appear in some of the frames or all of a sudden you'll get like a wavy line across it and I noticed the more I watched it the more these problems happen I watched my original edit and then my finished video and they were all fine so I had to delete that video from YouTube it's obviously got corrupt in some way um, and then re-upload which is what I did so that's at this stage where you do that now you would simply copy that link that's there um, paste that into another browser window and watch it back in full make sure you're dead happy with it if you're happy with it and you're ready to go then you click this section down here and you move it from unlisted to public and then you click on save changes and that will then give the broadcast message to all your subscribers well you've just uploaded a video go watch it obviously at the same point here if you wanted to say you know um, I'll do it as a, a scheduled one you would get an option there to schedule the video that's kind of like where we're almost at with video uploading now I'm going to give you one last bit of information that I personally go through um, and this is down in the monetization section um, and this is if your video um, is able to play ads this allows you to dictate what sort of ads that those videos um, can be shown um, so whether it's an ad that interrupts the video whether it's a little banner that comes up across the bottom that kind of thing and if your video is over 10 minutes long you get an option to put multiple adverts within that so once you've set your adverts click on save changes and then you're pretty much done um, advanced settings that is really about the video whether you want people to be able to um, leave a rating on the video or not and whether you want to block spam messages that kind of thing those are all under there again going back to the narrative the description part of your video um, what I've got is um, it's in channel and then upload defaults um, I've got a section there where I just add in all the little bits that I want to be in every single video um, and crucially here I've got those um, hashtags down the bottom um, and if you place um, up to three hashtags at the bottom of your video description they must be clear of any other text at the bottom um, then they allow people and YouTube to kind of start correlating and linking those videos to the things as this video that we're talking about you know is about camera gear and editing I'll change those if you look now as you're watching this video and the video title and then you'll see above that um, in blue the hashtag what I want to go through now is your actual YouTube channel and the way that that's set up for new and um, existing subscribers and viewers to look at 
So what's going to happen is um, you're going to arrive at your channel and as you're logged in as you, you get some different options, customize channel and then obviously create a studio. Uh, we're going through the customize channel section here um, because I want to show you about the extra options that are available. So in this section here at the top for returning subscribers, what video do you want them to see every time they come back to the channel? And then you've got another section at the top there which is for new visitors. So on mine for new visitors, I show them my um, camper van uh, wiring video. And then you've got all these sections. So, you know, your recent upload is a section. Then I've got a build series about the VW. Um, and you add those by going to add section, uh, choosing content, and they're all down there. The only thing I'd say that you don't really want to do um, as a proper YouTuber, you don't ever want to do liked videos, you know, your playlists and things like that. And if you haven't put your playlist together, then that's back in Creator Studios under Video Manager, Playlist. Once you finish with that, you click on Done. Now over on right hand side here, you can see I've got some what I call feature channels and then you've got related channels. Related channels are YouTube generated. You can't do anything about that. Um, by having that enabled, um, it allows you to be linked in other people's channels. So I'd say leave it enabled. Um, I say it will populate yourself. The bit that I go is a section above it. Um, and you can actually call this whatever you want. Feature channels, you can call it my favorite YouTubers, do whatever. Um, and then you're allowed five channels in this section. Hey, if you like my channel, go and watch these channels. And that's pretty much what that is. So once you've set up them, um, click on done. So at the top of the screen here, you can set um, links to your website or Instagram and things like that, like I've got there. And you can also edit your channel art. So hopefully now you've seen the basics of uploading a video to YouTube and the types of things that you need to type in and where to go. A couple of nice little accessories that you can add to your browser that help you with those processes, help you manage YouTube and things like that. Um, and then obviously moving on from that if you are monetized some extra little bit of information about that so don't forget as well that you've still got a chance to win this by the end of this month March 2019 at the end of the month I'm going to pick a random winner and then let you know a few days afterwards um, it's the DJI Osmo mobile uh, gimbal version 2 um, put your phone in there go and film things it'll smooth it all out help you take nice little pictures and time lapses and all that kind of stuff um, and just generally um, help you maybe take better uh, video content for your channel. So don't forget about this one. Uh, this is going to be given away pretty soon. So thanks for watching. You take care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.